Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I want to discuss the patch reworks, what we saw. We saw from the new patch, guys, a new card, Cersei, is a really strong card. We saw a bunch of other cards, but Cersei is the biggest one here. Transform your other cards into random cards that cost one more on reveal. Absolutely amazing card to finish games with. So it's really strong. Can, um, if you can double her effect with Wong, or maybe you could uh, basically... Make your smaller units much bigger and fill up your boards uh, with really big units. So really a strong card. I actually see a lot of insane decks. Obviously it's super RNG, but usually the RNG is on your favor if you're playing one uh, one more. Usually if you can... Uh, anything 3 and 4 is really strong. So if you can get those out, uh, if you can maybe Evo your... Uh, to level up your two and three costs, three and four, usually you gain a lot of value from that. So that's what her game plan is doing. But yeah, guys, so uh, I do want to talk about mostly in this uh, video, but the new patchwork that we have, I want to talk about the, and discuss all the cards that switched up and changed up uh, and, and nerfed, uh, been buffed, everything like that. So we'll jump right in, guys. We'll start with Professor X. Uh, he switched, he got a little bit more powerful, but what happened was he lost his lockdown. Now things can move into his spot. So really no deck is actually makeable uh, against this. It's very hard to make a deck against this. A lot of the deck's uh, strategy was to move around anyways. And now that the cards can move in and out of locked uh, locations, it actually hurts you, especially if you don't have any movement. Of course, you can make... Uh, you would be very strong against non-movement uh, heavy decks. Obviously, if you have more movement than your opponent, uh, you can really play around th that locked zone. But in general, that one power is not going to really be beneficial in any way. And uh, this is a huge nerf in general over the Professor X, in my opinion. It's a huge nerf. As you can see, obviously, it's a red card. So even though they buffed his power, it's a huge nerf that now his ability is allowing movables, which actually can help you. Also can hurt a lot of these old Professor X meta decks. But anyways, moving on, guys. That's it. That's it for Professor X. I mean, it is definitely nerfed. We have Cannonball here. Cannonball has uh, seen some better days. I'm not going to lie. They nerfed Cannonball as well. Really strong card. Uh, now it's actually not as fun to use it. Uh, what it used to do is on reveal, uh, move the highest power enemy card away from here. And if you can, just destroy it. Uh, which is really amazing like let's say every other lane is full you just destroy that unit which is absolutely insane besides that you get a big eight uh power guy uh moving out of here obviously there's some rng there but uh losing that making it a seven off his ability is still very strong but i'm you're gonna feel it in a game where you only have like six turns to play you're gonna feel that one off uh one lower power and so that's why this is a huge nerf i think this is basically unplayable now and so this sucks really heavy. But yeah, Cannonball was just too huge, I guess, for them. Uh, also, Hela got a small nerf here. Uh, she's kept her power, but uh, on reveal, reserved all cards. You discard it to random locations with minus two powers. So unfortunately, she doesn't just Evo uh, level up everything for free uh, and, and just bring up all your cards back. You actually have to lose some power on every card. Which is still strong. I, I think this is uh, actually a balance, more of a balance than a nerf. Because uh, I think that ability is a little bit too strong. Uh, of course, we don't see a lot of decks utilizing it. But if they start bringing a lot more death, uh, killing your own units and a lot more cards that benefit from that, we were going to see a lot more Hela. So it makes sense that they nerfed her uh, or balanced her at, uh, at least. Uh, also, we have another nerf here, Ebony Blade. Uh, this is uh, definitely a nerf. Ongoing, you can't be destroyed and its power can be reduced. That was that used to be Ebony's power uh, ability. So ongoing, you just cannot reduce its power. Now you can not destroy it, but you can also reduce its power, which sucks really heavy. It basically takes the whole power away from this card. Huge nerf. Not sure why they actually nerfed it that heavy. But yeah, basically this card is unplayable now, in my opinion. Red Hulk got another... I would say this is a buff. To be honest with you guys, I would say this is a buff, not a nerf in any way. Uh, now, of course, he doesn't gain the plus power. But to be honest with you, you're only gaining it for two or three turns anyway. So losing uh, losing one or two power and uh, gaining that as a base is better for you in the long run. It allows you to actually 
uh, gain the, 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 the actual use up the energy in a, in a useful way. So I really do believe is this as a buff. Uh, you know, you could still gain the value from the Red Hulk with just one turn of unspent energy while he's in your hand. Uh, of course, this is a, obviously a huge nerf to be honest with you. The later the game goes the, uh, and he's in your hand, the bigger this nerf is. But also, to be honest with you, you don't want to go too many turns without unspent energy unless this is actually the deck you're building. So Red Hulk uh, just go, needing one or two turns and still having a strong base, uh, still gaining that strong base with one turn. Basically, he not, doesn't lose anything as long as you get one turn of unspent. He only starts losing the power after the second or third turn, which is usually what you used to do. You only used to get one or two turns of energy unspent anyways for Red Hulk. And so that's why it makes sense. Uh, this is really not necessarily a, a nerf. Uh, it's kind of a balancing act. Moving on, guys. You're going to see some buffing here. Gilgamesh, they want this card to become playable. They buffed it a lot. Plus one power for each of your other cards in play with increased powers. Uh, really cool card, honestly. If you can play Kazan, Gilgamesh, Squirrel Girl, uh, you can get a lot of value. Maybe Blue Marvel. I, I mean, that's huge. Blue Marvel after the Gilgamesh. That's huge. And yeah, this is a huge buff. A 5-9 that gives plus 1 to everything that gives plus 1. And Blue Marvel gives everything plus 1. So it's uh, actually really cool to see this as your final thing. Play Blue, Blue Marvel. Then you play maybe an Ant-Man, Gilgamesh. And you win games from that with an insane amounts of power but yeah Gilgamesh is definitely buffed now much stronger now and that season pass just feels better now moving on another big buff is Marvel Captain sorry Captain America I call him Captain Marvel same colors uh, but yeah he, they don't un, uh, they don't do anything to his ongoing which is really strong ongoing ability to give other ongoing cards plus two but they did give him a small buff. Yeah, he was lacking, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, honestly, in beginner play, he's just the best card in the game now. Him and Punisher in beginner, like pool one cards, he's probably one of the best decks. He made ongoing decks much better uh, with that plus one. It's it's insane buff, I'm not gonna lie, guys. It makes uh, it almost as equal to Punisher. But late in, in pool 2, pool 3, pool 4, this guy, I mean, you're not going to even feel that buff. It's nothing. But pool 1, it's going to make ongoing decks like with that utilized claw and onslaught insane. They're just going to become so broken. Shane also, they made this card so good. I actually, I'm so impressed with this. Imagine the buff they gave this to this card. Plus 2 power for a 3 cost card. That's a huge buff, guys. I uh, cannot wait for them to buff Bishop up. To make him a 3-3 or a 3-2, that would be nice. But yeah, Shayna, add a random one cost to each location. Obviously, it's only on your side. This, combined with Kazan next turn, gives a huge amount of number. Then you can combine that with Blue Marvel. Then you can combine that with the Gilgamesh, Ant-Man. Huge combo is there, guys. Pushing out a lot of units and just pushing so much damage out. It's absolutely insane. Shayna's buff is crazy. It's gonna make pull 2, pull 3 decks. Uh, much better. Uh, you're not going to see a huge difference. She's still not going to be playable in much bigger decks, much higher elo, much bigger metas. But still, uh, these earlier beginner metas, she's going to be so strong now with the Kazan. Also, finally, guys, we have a Stegron here. Stegron is a really strong ability, uh, card that really can change the, the whole course of the game. Move an enemy card uh, here to the right, just pushes it out. Imagine pushing a Claw. Or pushing something. The only problem is this is completely RNG based, and you you know you just gotta hit the, your luck with this. But Stegron's buff here is huge. Not only now, do you uh, it used to be also to any other location. Now it's always to the right, so you can actually plan this out. Uh, Stegron, there are certain certain decks that can uh, you know force a lock in one uh, location and and really hurt it. And, uh, and give a lot of minuses maybe so stick around makes sense that's one power buff is gonna be felt out and yeah guys I'm actually really happy with this deck guys and with all of these patchworks but yeah guys that's it for me today I uh, that's all the patch rework I wanted to show you guys Cersei's here she's gonna be a lot of fun to play uh, Red Hulk is back Hela is a little bit nerfed Professor X, they ruined him for us. Cannonball is kind of unplayable now. But Shayna and Stegron and Gilgamesh can really give off really big uh, combos. You make huge decks. And so, honestly, I'm kind of enjoying these patch reworks. I'm enjoying Cersei. 
interested in your opinion guys what do you think about these reworks and i'll see you next time peace